Hi, everybody. Along with Christian Miller, I'm Hoppy Kirchival, and we're going to talk about this Big 12 schedule that has now come out. We know the teams West Virginia is going to play in the Big 12. Let's take it game by game, get a little thumbnail of what it's going to look like for this coming football season. First of all, West Virginia will have their first Big 12 game coming up on September 29th in Morgantown. The Baylor Bears come to town. Now, Christian Robert Griffin III is gone, so they don't have that great talent from last year who won the Heisman Trophy. But I think still there'll be a tremendous buzz because it's your first Big 12 game. And B, Baylor now has emerged as a national program because of last year, success the last couple of years with Robert Griffin. That's true. It's really put them back on the map from a recruiting standpoint, and it was their best season in 25 years. Art Briles, of course, the head coach, very similar to Holgerson. It's sort of a system they've created there now. So hopefully, you know, they'll be able to plug somebody in. But as you know, if you don't have a Pat White, you don't have a Geno Smith, sometimes it's a little bit harder to get going early in the season. So the first game in the Big 12, West Virginia versus Baylor. Now the second game, how about this? West Virginia goes to Austin on October 6th to take on the Texas Longhorns, preseason number 22. Uh, established national program, and you're in that big house, over 100,000 people. Over 100,000. It's actually the fifth largest in the, in the country, Hop. They're, they're expanding to 112,000 to, to just edge out Michigan. Eventually that will happen. But it's going to be quite an atmosphere for the Mountaineers, nothing like throwing you to the wolves right off the bat. Um, but there's a quarterback controversy there a little bit with Case McCoy, of course Colt McCoy's brother. Uh, David Ash also is battling for the position. When they had Vince Young and Colt McCoy, they won some championships at Texas. Without the quarterback, the last two years are right around 500, which is very unusual for Texas. They actually had a, a string of 12 seasons being ranked in the top 25. That came to an end in 2010, and they've been struggling the last couple of years. Hopefully, the Mountaineers can get them at a good time. Yeah, they're actually grumbling a little bit in Austin right now mm -hmm. uh, with Mac Brown because they haven't been as successful as Texas fans expect they would be. The next game for West Virginia in the Big 12 will be on the road. It's going to be October 13th. They take on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. This is a program trying to build back up with Tommy Tuberville. Two years and so far he's 500. What's the story on the Red Raiders? Well, I think the Red Raiders obviously had a lot of success with uh, Mike Leach. Took them to 10 bowl games. Um, since then, Tuberville's came in, adapted a new system, which hasn't really got fully running yet. It usually takes a couple of years. Tuberville's won wherever he's been, obviously at Old Miss and at Auburn. So. He will probably get the players there, but a little bit, uh, that's probably one of the more unknown programs right now as far as what to expect if you're a Mountaineer fan. Um, but again, that's hopefully a good thing. You'd rather see a team like that that's rebuilding as opposed to a powerhouse team like an Oklahoma or a TCU. And a storyline there everybody will be talking about, Dana Holgerson going back to Lubbock and playing back at Texas Tech. Yeah, a lot of people associate uh, Holgerson with Oklahoma State, but he actually spent seven years at Texas Tech, so probably a little more familiar with Lubbock than he actually would be in Stillwater. The Mountaineers' next opponent will be on October 20th. They'll be back in Morgantown to take on Kansas State. Now, here's a program, Christian, that was down for a couple years. And then guess what? Bill Snyder comes back. He's 72 years old. He's back as the head coach. They're having success again, and they are preseason ranked in the top 25. That's true, which is a little bit uh, unusual for them. They've only won the Big 12 one time in his tenure. But they do have uh, Colin Klein coming back. He's potentially a Heisman candidate, which there are several in the Big 12. It's going to be an exciting year from a quarterback perspective. They've got some good skill players as well. So Kansas State, one of those teams really well known for their defense, kind of, kind of blue collar like the Mountaineers. So a team that sort of parallels West Virginia as far as the way that they play, the stadium, the atmosphere. So it should be a very good game. On November 3rd, it'll be the culmination of Mountaineer Week and the TCU Horn Frogs come to Morgantown. So this is going to be a game of two new Big 12 opponents. So West Virginia finally, Christian, plays TCU, but neither team is in the Big East. They're both in the Big 12. Set this game up. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting game simply because you do have two teams that have really been trying to get to that next level from a conference perspective. Now, finally, they get to play each other. I think it'll be a great atmosphere in Morgantown with a team like TCU coming in. They've won, Hop, 11 games, seven out of the last nine years which is a pretty incredible statistic. Uh, they have Casey Pawhawk coming in as quarterback. He's also considered uh, potentially a Heisman-type guy. They've got an explosive offense. They actually led the country, Hoppy, in defense 2008, 2009, and 2010, which is an incredible run from a defensive perspective. Uh, they were a little off last year. They fell all the way to 32nd. But that defense has got a lot of talented uh, veterans on it. It'll be a great challenge uh, for the Mountaineers on both sides of the ball in Morgantown on that afternoon. Coming up on November 10th, think about this game. 
West Virginia at Oklahoma State. Dana Holgerson goes back to Stillwater. The storylines are going to be everywhere for that matchup. And the question is, Hop, if you're going to make a road trip next year, will it be to Texas to see the big stadium and the, and the atmosphere of Texas? Or do you go to Oklahoma State, which is known for having a great atmosphere there at Boone Pickens Stadium? And, of course, Holgerson returning to Oklahoma State. From a player standpoint, of course, they lose Brandon Whedon. They lose Justin Blackman. So there are some key components to that Oklahoma State offense that are going to have to be replaced. It's always difficult to, to just put guys in those slots and, and stay at that same level. They were producing over 500 yards of offense you know, every game last year. One of the top programs in the country, 23-3 and over the last two seasons in Stillwater. So tremendous buzz. If they can keep it going when West Virginia gets there, that could be a really exciting national game as well. We continue now to look at this Big 12 schedule along with Christian Miller. I'm Hoppy Kirchival. And I tell you, Christian, when you start to break this down, you realize how challenging the schedule is going to be. We were talking about Kansas State, TCU, Oklahoma State. And then after that, guess what? Oklahoma comes to town. you got to play the Oklahoma Sooners. They're preseason number four. They are Oklahoma. That's going to be a huge challenge. Can you imagine the atmosphere at Miami Pushcock Stadium for that ball game? Yeah, that's going to be, hopefully at that point of the season, this will be a game day type of atmosphere. If West Virginia can get through some of those early hurdles that we've talked about, you know, if you can win that Maryland game, if you can win at Texas, that's obviously going to be a big hurdle. If you could somehow get to that Oklahoma game unscathed, the atmosphere could be very LSU-like. Be another chance for West Virginia on the national stage. You know, Oklahoma, Hop, has proven to be one of the best teams in the country every year at home. They're very, very suspect on the road. After that tough run in the middle latter part of the season, West Virginia goes to Ames, Iowa for the first time, and on November 24th will play Iowa State. And I think, Christian, uh, perhaps unfairly, Mountaineer fans might look at the Big 12 and go, well, okay, that's the team you can beat as Iowa State. I don't think anybody's like that in the Big 12, especially because this Iowa State program under Paul Roach, they are building, they're putting money in the program, they've made a commitment, and I don't know if it's going to be this year, but they're a program that's getting better. Yeah, they are getting better, Hop. Paul Rhodes obviously has ties to Pitt. He was the defensive coordinator the year that they upset West Virginia, kept us from going to the national championship game, so he's very familiar with the Mountaineers. Keep in mind, last year, Oklahoma State had a chance to play in the national championship. They go to Ames, Iowa. Big upset, big atmosphere. So even when a team in the Big 12 isn't necessarily at the top of the league from a standings perspective, late in the season, anybody can beat anybody, especially when you go on the road. And that's what West Virginia, following Oklahoma, will have to watch out for a letdown at Iowa State. And West Virginia will wrap up their inaugural Big 12 schedule at home on December 1st against Kansas. And guess what? Charlie Weiss is coming as the head coach of Kansas. Didn't have a good run at Notre Dame, went back to the pros. Now he's back. Interesting hire by Kansas to go that Charlie Weiss route. What's Kansas going to look like? Well, Hop, you know, of course, Mountaineer fans over the years have seemed to have a little despise for Notre Dame. Well, now we can just put Charlie Weiss in that hole. <laughs> we can despise Charlie Weiss for a while. They went the route of the up-and-coming superstar coach in Turner Gill didn't work out in Kansas, so I think they've said, you know what, we need to get some recruits in here, we need to get some immediate impact in here. Uh, they won the league one time several years ago, they made it to a BCS game. Since then, the last four or five years, program has really struggled, so Charlie Weiss brings obviously a reputation, some Super Bowl rings, we'll see what he can get done, but I do not expect Kansas to be super competitive, at least here in his first year. That's how West Virginia wraps up their Big 12 schedule against Kansas. Of course, West Virginia also with games against Maryland at home, Marshall at home in that JMU game, which they play over in Washington, D.C. For 2012, the Pitt Panthers not on that schedule. For Christian Miller, I'm Hoppy Kirchival. That's a wrap-up of the 2012 schedule for the West Virginia University Mountaineers.